And we are back. I am Baron J67. And I am T Jones. What's going on? Adventures of the Black Nerds. We're you back. Another We're episode. Back. Another episode. I love it. Um, it's, it's so cool, man, because, you know, uh, this is a passion project and to see it still going and to see that we're still uh, we're still growing we're still trying new things yeah we're making moves you know it's a it's a it's a heck of a feeling and um i'm i'm happy man mm-hmm. I'm yeah happy. there's so much actually have gone down since we did the since we shot the last one um e3 big old yes. e3 happened uh uh, some good things. I'm I'm gonna let you touch on that more. Cause I think you paid attention to to it more than I did. Yeah. So jumping on to E3, um, I sat and watched a strong majority of it. I think the only one I didn't really watch was the Nintendo uh, the Nintendo showcase because they rarely do. I don't think they do press conferences anymore. I think they more or less give you like a video, like here here's what's going on. Boom. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, and. So I took the time and um, I really, really, really enjoyed what Microsoft brought to the table. Um, I liked what Sony brought to the table, but my I'll get to my main complaint about that. Mm-hmm. And I'll get to my main complaint about all of them. I'll, I'll start with the neighbors. The one thing I had a major issue with when it came to Microsoft, I'm not even going to talk about EA because EA is EA. Uh, the issue with Microsoft is the lack of first party content now they address that Mm -hmm. they came out strong showing all these things that they're doing they bought up three or four companies that um they're all but the weird thing about the companies they bought they're all companies that for the most part exclusively worked with microsoft already yeah such as um you know such as undead labs and whatnot and they're all fairly new so a lot of them their claim to fame is like one game so maybe that with the power and the backing of Microsoft and the money funneled into them, hopefully it'll give them the, the environment to grow and produce more first party games. Now, I, they addressed that, but then the first party stuff that they did announce, it's it, for the most part, it's all future. It's all future stuff. Yeah, there was a couple of indie games that got released that like that day during the conference, but it was... It was still, eh. um, but the the positives of it were the moves that they made, and the fact that they addressed all the things that are the big complaints when it comes to Microsoft. The number one complaints that when it comes to Microsoft, they address. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, we know we don't have enough first party games. Hey, we know um, we know we have a lot of cancellations. Um, they really touched on all of that, and they I guess they showed that they're listening. Um, but I'm I'm a person of action. You can talk all day, but until I see a whole plethora of first party games coming out that are big titles that a lot of money are behind in a big company, not so much a. Um, I, I'm not big on uh, uh, marketing budgets. I'm I'm I need money put into games. If you only got one commercial and you run it for a whole year straight, I would rather that with a dope game than you giving me. A bunch of different commercials and the game comes out not as it should yeah fallout fallout 4 um i hate to use them as an example and then that was the cool oh, thing shit. Too. i mean they fit they it fit. fits they put, a, they put so much money into fallout 4 commercial uh, marketing and commercials that i i really they even had a commercial remember they had a commercial for the the uh the was the collector's edition a whole commercial yeah. for the collector's edition. Remember when it was just buy it or pre-order it and you get this. No, yeah. it was a whole commercial built off of the collector's there, edition. There was a lot that went into that. And that was actually a cool thing, too. So during the Microsoft presentation, Todd Howard came out and showed gameplay and the main commercial for Fallout 76. Yeah. Now, everybody kind of lost their noodle because there was rumors that it was going to be online only. It's not a rumor. The game is going to be online only. I think 100%. that that's 100% cool. And I'm going into 76 blind. And hey. the reason why I, I want to do that is I want to I want to give, and this is why I didn't pay attention to E3 that much. I want to give okay. games a fighting chance. 
Because a lot of times that when games come out, and we've had this conversation on here before, when games come out, the premise and the ideal of the game is already sold to us through whatever marketing scheme they have going on, whatever commercial they have going whatever, and even demos even ruin them. So me not paying so much attention, the reason why I'm excited for 76, imagine everything that you got in Fallout. Because regardless of what we feel about 4, it was the, a good overall game. Yeah, and then the things inside the game was dope. Like, e- imagine being able to customize your own weapon, add different things. Your gun, you're, you're in a gunfight, and your gun starts to break on you. You see what I'm saying? The VAT system. All of this stuff is dope. But imagine doing that with a real-life person or partnering up with a real-life person to run this specific mission or to do this specific storyline thing, whatever they got going on. I'm okay with that. As long as that they, as long as they bring me a great game, I'm okay with it being online only. And I, I heard that was a little complaint. I, I was I was actually reading an article. I want, I'm not going to even say who because I, I, I'd be guessing. Um, talking about... Uh, how that pulls away from the true fan base of Fallout. It not having a storyline. It not having story mode. It not having things. And I was like, well, you could still get that grindy mo- mentality inside of 76 online. Because look how many games have that now. Where you can go, you can still go. F- I'm pretty sure they're still going to put bobbleheads in it. I'm pretty sure they're still going to put like secret areas for weapons. Or that one death crawler sitting in a basement. And you got to get down there. You got to either kill him to get to what's down there, or you may kill him and get to nothing. It may be nothing down there. It's just, hey, I killed him because I did it. So I, I, I want to give it a fighting chance, and that's kind of why I didn't really pay attention to it that much. But 76, the idea of it sounds amazing. Yeah, because, I mean, even when you go, we go back to the Fallout 3 game uh, days where we would be sitting there in party chat playing Fallout 3, like walking around. Yep. Talking about what we're doing, and that was back in what high school? Oh man, imagine streaming and doing that. Us yeah. sitting in Discord playing that game, right? That's what I'm saying. So it's it's gonna be, uh, it's a it's an experience. I'm happy that they didn't call this Fallout Five mm-hmm. or give it a or give it a full title because I think by them calling it Fallout Seventy Six, they made it clear. Yeah, hey, this is a part of the world, but this isn't the the same world that we're all and then they made it a prequel so that even makes it better is this because before what this is only 25 years after the bombs drop okay so normally you're like a hundred hundreds yeah yeah but now this is 25 years after the bombs drop okay so, so that's that's they, fine they're, they're taking a big step and they're going out of their way to make a new experience mm-hmm and they what's so funny is I feel like they would have got no problems at all if they would have called it something else. But by it being the world of Fallout, that's where the I, problem I think be. Yeah, the, it's the world that people I would say it's the world that people want. Because and, re, re, regardless of we know what to we know what to look for when a Fallout game comes out. And I'm I'm comparing it from Fallout three up until now. So even Vegas, you loved Vegas. I didn't really like Vegas that much. I'm gonna be honest. I actually enjoyed Fallout Three more than Fallout New Vegas. Okay, me well, I, me too. I, and now, I let me and it's funny uh, because I tested it. Oh, hold on for a second. Let me ask you a question. Would uh-huh. you say uh, Fallout? Would you say that uh, Fallout New Vegas was better than Four? Was better than what? Was Fallout New Vegas? Would you say it's better than four? Hell yeah! I haven't even finished four, bro. Okay, see, yeah, see, I did you even fit? You finished three, right? Yeah, I finished. Okay, so you finished three. You finished New Vegas multiple times. Yeah, and I, I would say you probably played New Vegas more than you played three. You played the mess out of New Vegas, and I remember watching you play it and i was like yo i just can't get into this game i don't know why i just can't get into it and you love the mess that you tried to i i had to just sit and watch you play that game and i just it it had the same look 
it just didn't have the same feel as three. And it, with it, th- oh, I'm, I keep cutting you off. Go ahead. You know what's so funny about this? the The major argument is that people people feel Fallout New Vegas is closer to the original Fallout material than Fallout Three is. Okay. But what's so funny is when you really look at all the decision making and all the different options and availability to do different things in Fallout Three. Fallout Three is in all is in essence a first person full fledged Fallout game. Mm-hmm. Make crazy decisions, like even from Jump Street. With spoiler alert, you get to either destroy Megaton, you get to either disable the bomb, yeah, you get to either tell the sheriff that the guy is there to blow up Megaton, and there was just all these different options. So there was choices. Just, there was a lot more choices in to me in I, Fallout 3 than Fallout New Vegas. I'm going to tell you something. There's only been one other game that I... Okay, so I played through... And remember, there was a glitch in Fallout uh, 3 that you could... Uh, or it wasn't a glitch. It was just an exploit. If you did this one thing... I, re- I just remember it being one thing you did. It would instantly drop your... Your like ability all the way down to good, or you can shoot it all the way up to. So people would save it at that point, and to beat the game at the baddest. Because they remember there was three different endings. So other than Fallout, there was only one other game that I played three times just to get all of the endings, and that was Heavy Rain. And Heavy Rain had multiple endings, but with with Fallout, the reason why Fallout was so Dope to me was because not only it was my first Fallout, it was the first Fallout I ever played. The it it was a in the, in the essence it had the shooter element there. I could play first person. The Vats was amazing to me because it's not I don't have to I don't have to try hard against the AI. You see yeah. what I'm saying? That's what made it dope. Like I'm gonna kill you in well in the game. I'm gonna kill you in the game. There's nothing that's going to stop me from killing you. Why not make it dope? Why not give me vats? You know, that made it a whole different element for me. So I played the mess out of that game just to get to, just to get everything. I'm talking about platinuming that game. I platinum that game. So I love the shit out of Fallout 3. Fallout 3 was, in the essence, it's up there as my favorite game. You remember that mission where you had to, I want to say it was Rangers. It was, I think it was Brotherhood of Steel. You had to go to the rooftop and get the Brotherhood of Steel out of, uh, out of the building. <coughs> remember that? And you had to shoot your way through all the uh, super mutants. No, I, there was a mission and you made it onto the roof and you were with like three or four people. And you had to shoot your way all the way through the building to get out of that building. You had to go save, like, I think it was like Bravo Squad or something. Like, the mission was called, uh, it was like a radio. Yeah. You found, it was crazy. But but the point was, I felt like if somebody said, what do you want to go back and play right now? Fallout 3 or New Vegas? I'd say Fallout 3. Fallout 3? And, and that's the point I was trying to make. I, if I, I loaded, I have Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas on this laptop. But I would really rather play Fallout 3. Okay, so you, did you play the funny Fallouts before that? No. After I played Fallout 3, I went back. Actually, after New Vegas, I went back and played the older Fallouts. Okay. Uh, I really like them. Uh, I enjoy those top-down uh, RPGs. Yeah. And, and then the RPG elements were way more intense. Mm. And I think this is why people were more satisfied with New Vegas. There's a large people who think New Vegas is better because for example on Fallout if your if your uh intelligence skill was uh all the way down like if you had zero intelligence you would talk like a caveman you'd be like uh, 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 uh. like <laughs> yeah you, you couldn't even communicate wow so everything really had a serious meaning and serious weight behind it wow and serious checkpoints now that and now going back to Fallout 4 these are things that we're missing. What's the point of being the most smartest guy in the room? Mm-hmm. Where's the skill check for that? Well, Is you know what, bro- you know what broke that though, right? Well, at least for me, 
because uh, the game was very forgiving. Don't get me wrong. That Fallout 4 was very forgiving. You know, you didn't have to have it maxed out, your skills maxed out in a certain category, but you still felt like, like I felt invincible in that game. Like, and I that, used to just run around and not care. And I and yeah. I guess it was because in Fallout 3, you know, you get to a certain point where you know you're the shit in that game. True. You, you got the weapons That's you want. Cool. All RPGs that you you hit that point unless they run. You know, it's funny. Remember when 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 the caravan people used to come around, and you yes. could rob them and get into shootouts with them and shit. Oh man, I was killing I was killing them all. Like <laughs> I was killing them all just to get the ammo. And the one element about Fallout Three I love the most, which all of them have up to this point, mm-hmm. is the hoarding. Me in video games like that where I can save material, I am a hoarder. I don't leave nothing unturned. Uh, I always say, I've been saying it since I've been playing God of War, uh, the wrong way is the right way in any RPG because you're bound to find something you weren't going to find if you were if you were to stay on track. So in Fallout 3, imagine saving everything. I didn't even have the guns yet. And I was getting picking up the ammo. Oh, I'm oh I'm I'm too full. Let me fast travel to the base, drop some stuff off, and then go right back and start over again. And that's kind of like my that's what I loved about it. The the the, the element that I could do whatever I want to do in this game. I could rob you. I could let you go. I could help you through this mission, and then beat it, then kill you after the. <laughs> and that's what I loved about it. Um, so Fallout, Fallout is, is a free game. Fallout 4 is the same thing. I just didn't, I wasn't captivated the same way with Fallout, with Fallout and, 4. And you, and the, honest to God, it was because of the choices, mm-hmm. the lack of, yeah, the fact that like somebody even made a video and you could tell, uh, you told like Cogsworth asked you, oh, let's go and do this, this and that. And you have the option to tell him no. And you tell them no, and you still go do the mission. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Anyway, and it was like, then why even give me the option to say no? Mm-hmm. Like, and then you couldn't what? kill them. Like, I tried to kill. I tried to kill them. It didn't work. They just dropped down, and then you got to heal them. It, it, uh, and then they, and, and then, and then you couldn't load them up the way you wanted to load them up, because they uh, would always find some stupid gun that they were equipped to use. No, I want you to use this rocket launcher. Like, <laughs> yeah. like why aren't you shooting rockets right? Now? You need to be blasted every and everything, move every and anything moving, man. So, but but let me and let me go back to this and back to um, the Microsoft E E three, and then um, even back to Todd Howard first talking about uh, Fallout seventy six. Yeah, I trust Bethesda when it comes to taking chances and trying something new. Of course, because. By Fallout 3 being your first Fallout, if you would have played the originals, Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, blah, 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 blah. If you would have played those before you would have played Fallout 3, you'd have been nervous as hell. Mm -hmm. You go from a top-down RPG to a first-person shooter, plain and simple. That is a huge jump. That's that's a light-year jump. So I can understand... Now, knowing they were able to take that transition and successfully do it, created a basically a whole new damn genre of gaming. Yeah, uh, I can trust them to do the same thing with this. Okay. I can give they they've earned that for me to give them a solid try without too many questions until I play. It. I'm a, I'm gonna say this. I'm I'm gonna say this with uh, Fallout. I. Up until this point, Fallout 3 was my game. And that was the True. first Beth, uh, Bethsaida, uh, Bethsaida game that I... Um, say it again? Bethesda. But Bethesda. Okay, that's how you say it. Bethesda. Well, that's my first Bethesda game that I, that I played. Um, the reason why... I'm okay, the reason why I'm okay with them and I'll take the risk with Bethesda is... No matter what I feel about from Fallout 3 up to Fallout 4, people love their games. True. I may not have liked some of them, but people love their games. Uh, pe- their games. I was just reading an article about how 
their the VR versions of Skyrim. Uh, oh, people, I love it. Yeah, and they they sold well this year, you know. And I wish I still had the the numbers in front of me. It was it was I I, I was shocked. People still buying Fallout Four VR or I mean I think that that just got announced. But all of these games are doing well. I can't knock I can't knock that. But I can risk. I'll risk. I'll take a risk on Bethesda. Not only yeah. that, because oh, yeah. Fallout Three was almost. You know what? I'm gonna say this. Fallout Three was the perfect game for me. Mm-hmm. It was the perfect game. So uh, my dog just walked in the room. Go, go, Echo. So it was the perfect game for me. That's why I think that I could take, I can do them the solid to take the risk. They have never done anything specifically where I'm like, mm, you know what? I question that. You know, other, I mean, their mobile games are addicting and fun. See, I, I've never played their mobile game. Oh, bro, you probably got it on your computer right now. You can go play Fallout Shelter like, mm-hmm. right now. And you know what? I had Fallout Shelter on my phone. It's amazing. Yeah, I just never stuck with I it because I used to play it on uh, my iPad. I used to, hell, I mean, it's it's simple fun. Yeah, and it gives you that mechanic of, oh, let me go out here and loot. Let me go out here and gear up everybody. Let I'm, me level. Up. I'm cool with Bethesda. Bethesda's solid with me, man. Yeah, I, like I said, companies that I trust, and they've always been one of the top like three companies I trust: Bethesda, Naughty Dog. Um, CD Projekt Red, mm-hmm. uh, the people who made The Witcher, The Witcher Three, or The Witcher series. Yeah, these are companies I trust. Naughty Dog. I mean, they give you your uh, hell. Didn't they make Horizon Zero Dawn too? Naughty Dog. I could be wrong. Let's look that up. I think I might be wrong. Well, I know they made Uncharted and Uncharted alone. Un- That's know, all you need to say is yeah. Uncharted. You know, Uncharted was just the male version of Tomb Raider. No, it was uh, Guerrilla Games. Guerrilla Games. They were the developer. Oh, but uh, Uncharted was basically a male version of uh, Tomb Raider with a lot more comedy. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, and and when I I played Uncharted, I felt like I was playing a a movie of uh, uh, Indiana Jones video game. Yeah. Like, I imagined... That's what Indiana Jones would have been. Just- I, man, I'm telling you, my favorite Uncharted moment was, I believe it was in 2. Or I, I think it was in 3, I'm sorry. Where he, he's in the, the plane crashes in the desert. Yep. And he's yep. stumbling, he's walking. And it, it keeps, zoom, it keeps uh, fading in and fading out. And then he's walking and then instantly gets into a gunfight. And a gunfight... Yep. In the game, last like ten minutes. So imagine if that was a movie, how how long it would last? Yep. It would have lasted. I said he's jumping off rocks and punching people and stumbling, picking yep. up. Man, that was the best moment in Uncharted, and I loved Uncharted. So I can see why you would say, "Oh, you know, Naughty Dog." The yeah. Naughty Dog hasn't they haven't fa- they haven't they haven't done anything even questionable yet. Yep. So. Um. And then, uh, what's it called? Red Dead, uh, Red Dead, uh, Rockstar. Rockstar was up, they're up there too, but with the, with what's going down with their, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and the way they're putting paywalls up for certain missions and whatnot, mm-hmm. and the way they do collectors, I'm having some issues with that. Like, Rockstar doesn't need to money grow. Of you course. don't need, to. the fact, their tennis game was fun. <laughs> like so so you you know but that's something we can get into in a sec so yeah. okay uh microsoft e, uh, e3 it was really good it showed a lot of promise i just hated the fact that they the main games they were showing are games that either fallen short or they were supposed to already come out hmm. so crackdown got pushed back again um and are you a fan so- of crackdown not enough to where that's the driving factor yeah me neither like you, should not, you should not lead with crackdown, I, I compare with crackdown. Crack I compare crackdown to uh, what's like what's the name of that signature game that usually comes with PlayStation when the brand new one comes out? Uh, what's the name of it? Oh, I know what you're talking. About. Uh, what's the? Um, uh, it's not Red yeah. Fraction. What is it? Killzone. Killzone. Yep. Man, it's 
Yeah, it, it comes out with every new system. There's yeah, a new and it is just it's not good. Like it kills on was no, not. It, well, let me tell you this: Crackdown was fun, but you should not headline anything. Yeah, with Crackdown. Okay, and the, all right, I guess what I'm let me let me rephrase that. I'm not gonna say it's not I fun because people I played it. it. It's just yeah. the it it. How do I want to say this? I don't feel an. It urge does to not attest the time. It's like a week old game. Most of the time, when you buy it, it's like, oh yeah, you get this free copy when you buy this edition, and they give you Killzone, and you put it in there. It's probably the only game you got with the dev system. You get it for Christmas. You download the game, and this is all you got to play. You get halfway through the story, and you don't finish the rest. And then you try the online, and then the online is some knockoff want to be battlefront and it's just not good i'm not really a true fan of certain games that's not 60 frames per second like battlefront is cool battlefront is cool even though it's not 60 frames per second it's still cool but that game i did like one youtube video on that game on that game and i never put it back in matter of fact i don't even think i have it anymore so it's like the I'm, signature game that comes with it. Hey, and, that, and this is and this is the thing. You should not. That should not be a major point of your E3. Yeah, it should be. Oh yeah, and of course, Crackdown Three. Like oh yeah, cool. Oh, crackdown. It shouldn't be your main driving commercial success. Yeah. Like, no. Um. But okay. So now moving on. So after after Microsoft. I want to say it was the Bethesda mm-hmm. conference because it's. I feel like I should have made more videos for it. Well, I slack so hard. Um, I was supposed. I was making videos like crazy, but then I was like, you know, I gotta take a break. Um, all of this shit started catching up with me. I started getting beat down, like an eyes twitching, and, hmm. and I was. I'm, I'm well, I had a uh, list here of all the games what? confirmed. By Bethesda. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It says. Uh, uh actually. Uh, it doesn't. This really doesn't say. Oh, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, next, Wolfenstein. Uh, big part that I skipped. Big, 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 big part that I skipped. We finally got Cyberpunk 2077 video. Um, we didn't get any gameplay. But we did get a commercial. We did get a view of the world and how intense and how in depth things are gonna be. And uh, it was really dope the way they introduced it. They made it look like uh, the stage got hacked, mm. and then CD Projekt Red uh, popped up, and then the intro for that game popped up. I can't believe I forgot that. Um, oh, so actually, was- it's only two games from, Beste- from uh, Bethesda uh, that's that have been confirmed. That's seventy six and Rage two. No, no, those are the only two that are that have street dates. Yeah, well, this well, that's what this says. Yeah, because they 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 announced Starfield. They announced Elder Scrolls six. Hmm. Uh, they also announced. Um, I think that's so. I guess that's this says yeah games. All the Bethesda games confirmed so far. When did mm-hmm. this get published? Oh, I'm reading a late one. No, which is fine because it should be more than enough. Yeah, but but it was just a whole. Um, it was really dope, bro. Oh, Wolfenstein too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. I did see oh, that. Yeah. They announced Wolfenstein uh, uh, DLC, and it's gonna be it's gonna be two players. It's gonna mm. be co-op. Okay. Uh, I want to say I don't know if they announced couch co-op. Or they just said co-op. I can't remember. But you're playing as uh, BJ's uh, twin daughters, mm. 18 years. So still beating the shit out of Nazis. Of course. I uh, remember when they when they announced that game last year, and it went into a tirade. People were uh, upset. Uh, I'm like, what are we? What are we upset about here? <laughs> bro, we're not gonna dive down that road because we. Can- you know me. I can get on my political soapbox. And yeah, it, it just was so. I'll that take, I'll, take, I'll take off my hidden cloud headband. It, it was just so funny because 
it the reason why I reason why I just think it's so funny is because it it's they Nazis have always been portrayed as whether it's Nazi zombies or just regular Nazis. I mean, I could tell you plenty of games where they have singled out a group of people and they were the enemy. Like this are you got to remember why this is so intense and yeah. why it's so monumental that Wolfenstein was the first shooter. Mm-hmm. And fighting Nazis. Yeah. Like, I, I never, I didn't see no problem with it because I don't never see no problem. I didn't see no problem with the Call of Duty 2, the Modern Warfare 2 airport thing until people started mentioning it. That was bad. Yeah, but when I, w- when I played it, I wasn't thinking about that. I just played oh, it. Got you. And then then all adults, I would say adults <laughs> were the ones to bring that to light. And, oh, yeah, this is that and the third. And it became this big ordeal. But at the end of the day, you know, th- this is the era we live in where all of that's going to be a problem. So you kind of got to appease everyone. No, you know what? It's not a it's not an issue of appeasing everyone. It's a it's a situation of acknowledging what you got to acknowledge the truth. You got to you got to shed light on what's happening here. Yes, we're going to piss off people who support Nazis. Because we're killing Nazis. Yeah. Right? But then and, but then it goes it goes backwards for them as well because they may say do show said show light upon the situation that may be that may not be for the other side to really think about not let me not say that not think about because we you do think about it obviously but it's just a different situation that well what if almost like the tip for tat thing well you can show me this i can show you that type deal so that's why i say it's kind of like i'm not really wanting to play that tug of war game with people because i'm more just say okay cool and then leave it at that but you can see where the problem can cut can, can can come into play because you may say that and the person that may like Nazis may disagree with what you say. And then they say something that you may disagree. Now they're just doing the tit for tat thing. And it's just and back you know, and forth tit for tat. And the thing about that is there, there's nothing, there's not much wrong with that because you got to take a stand somewhere. Oh, of course. And, of course. And, and, and saying that, fuck them. But that's why they and yeah, and I the reason why I say that is because when it the one thing I do is when I'm talking to somebody, I listen to them, whether I agree with them or not. I, um, it I can listen to you even if you speaking shit that I completely don't agree with, you know. Because when I speak, I would hope for you to want to hear me, but at the same time, you know, some people take that like just like how you have your stance. They have their stance as well. And it's never here to, to compare because that's what a lot of people do. But just because you believe this way, don't mean you got to be ignorant about the way that I believe stuff or the way I look at stuff. Because then that's where the hatred gets involved. Because it's not like now I'm not, I'm not listening to you because I'm not, or not even that. I'm not even listening to you. I'm just waiting to speak at that point. I just want you to finish your thought so I can tell you why you're wrong. And that's why even sometimes having them conversations with people is crazy. And Wolfenstein's a great example because of that. Because of the people that may, you know, that may like that. I don't see how you could, but at the end of the day, do your thing, man. It's the danger. Because I I get what you're saying, but you got to be careful because you really can't apply it to every scenario. Yeah. Because if i if i draw if i draw a number six and i put it upside down and show it to you i drew a number six it's not you see a nine no i turned my six around i made the mistake Mm -hmm. it's a six this is what i it was intended to be a six so we we, there's no argument well i see a nine no this is a number six i drew it that's what it is yeah that's a fact though that that's not an opinion okay right but people turn facts into opinionated arguments. And at that point, you can't argue with somebody. You can't because it's their opinion. And this is why, I, and this is the point of you got to be careful with you can't. Some people, yeah, you can hear them and acknowledge they exist, mm-hmm. 
but to have that discord is uh is risky because what what was that whole saying don't uh don't have a fight with uh um don't ever argue with an idiot because they'll just you'll they'll pull you to your their level and mm-hmm. beat you with experience yeah like so yeah i get it no and that, and that but that's i think that's where our the conversation would differ it's different when you're speaking facts because if you're speaking facts and it's wrong facts, then that's different. You're speaking something that's just not true. But once you get into opinions, this is where like the I like this because of that. OK, I can't argue with that. I can't argue with your opinion. That's your opinion at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you gonna believe that because that's what you believe. OK, at, the, at that point, where does the like the conversation just needs to end? Because I'm not going to convince you. To do it this way because that's already your opinion. You're already dug root down in the ground. This is what I stand for because this is what I, this is my opinion on this situation. And that's why I'm like, yo, even you're going to get drawback from everybody or from people from the opposite side who view it differently. And this, and at the end of the day, okay, man, do your thing. You can argue, but. As a gaming fan that loves Wolfenstein, or to be honest, love the the concept of Wolfenstein, the storyline, because I've never actually played the game, I'm okay with the game. I have no problems with the game. I don't think of any issue at all, and we kind of dove way off topic from what we were supposed to talk about today, but excuse me, that's just my, you know, that's just the way I look at it, because I can't argue with your opinion. Now, like you said with the whole number thing, the... The factual deal with that is you drew a six. If you said any other number other than that, you're lying. That is not facts. You see what I'm saying? But once you get into your opinion now, hey, man, at the end of the day, I can't argue with your opinion. Like, it's just the way you look at it. But, and let me, and let me hit you with this one. And this is straight from Martin Luther King, and then I'll leave it alone. Mm -hmm. The two most dangerous things in the world is conscientious stupidity and sincere ignorance the two most dangerous things in the world because and this is and this is why yeah we'll leave it at that <laughs> two, and I'll, I'll say it again two most dangerous things in the world I'm not going to dive into why you can dis- dissolve that for yourself and <laughs> Out for yourself. Yeah. Conscientious stupidity, choosing to be stupid, and honest to God, lack of information, sincere ignorance. Yeah, well, I mean, that's arguable too. Now, with this situation, it's arguable. You could argue that. <clears throat> yes, you can. <laughs> I you can tell can. you. I'm a, let me tell you why. Because, like you said, uh, even with the, the lack of information, if I'm being told this and it's what I believe based off of what I believe, I can't tell you can't tell me that that I'm wrong because that's what I believe. It's my that's my stance. That's my belief. So that that's why I say the whole what that, that would be sincere. Ignorance. Yeah, no, it's, it's not because that's what I believe because somebody can't tell you you don't you know, the what you believe. You because of lack of information. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Because I can have all the information on the world on it. And this is why I, this is why I said you're threading a line. Let me you're threading it. a line because it's my Order opinion. Right. At the end of the day, that's my opinion. Your opinion is drove is driven by what? By what my know? how I feel. How I what feel about it. No, that's not true. Because now you're talking about facts. That's facts at you're, the end of the day. But to say that your opinions aren't driven by what you know. Or what you don't know. No, but I get I, like removing this, removing the yourself from. You got to have both mm-hmm. to create. You, you you have to. Yeah. You you don't just wake up with an opinion. Your opinion is formulated through what you've experienced and what you've seen, what you've read, what you've heard, what you've seen. Um, and then that's how you who you who you talk to. Yeah, all where you where you live, all yeah, of that, all and, of these things come into play. Yeah, so that why it falls back onto sincere ignorance because sincere ignorance is honestly being without information so if you're honestly without and let's use the example of this if i grew up and i'll 
if I grew up not knowing, oh, we can even take it to a nerd style. I'm currently wearing the hidden, uh, the hidden cloud village, mm -hmm. which are the black people of the Naruto world. If me being from the hidden cloud village didn't know anybody or anything from the hidden leaf, which are the main characters in the world of Naruto, and all I heard was bad war stories, never met one in my life. But all my life, anything I've ever heard about them was bad. My first thoughts are they're bad. Okay. My so my my opinion is driven off of the facts that were taught to me by somebody else. Okay. Sincere ignorance because right, I'm now. Okay, now, okay, when you say it like that, yes, obviously that makes sense. Absolutely. But if and I that, know, say I know all of that, I heard everything that you said, and I still don't agree with you. Conscience that, stupid. That's still, their, <laughs> it's still your opinion at the end of the day. That's just how you feel. That's no, how you feel. True. Exactly. That's it's just, true. that's but my. That, and that's the second most dangerous thing. So, so now that person can say, so now that person that. can say the same thing about you. Because you fail to you fail to take into per, into consideration it, their this, opinion. This is why? It, but this if is, your opinion is your if your opinion is that everybody from the Hidden Leaf Village is evil, that's conscientious stupidity. After knowing all the truth, I just facts, hey how how it, at the end of the day at the end of the day they may it is it is like I said it's an it's an opinion. The reason why I'm okay with your opinion because. If you start taking away people's opinion, then you don't have an opinion. No, very. And true. that's why. That's why I don't. I can't argue that. This is why I just but, can't argue it because I would hate for somebody to take my opinion away because I do have opinions on things. You know, true. it and is what it is. Everything you say, you're not gonna agree with. Yeah. But if, but if you ignore things that are true, and and not even something that okay, let's you let's to ignore things that are true. Let's do it. To stay away from being as political as possible. Yeah, no, and and I get oh, you, but let's think yeah, about think about yeah. it in a gaming sense. If if you tell me if I say Fallout Four was just a bad game, right? I tell you it's a bad game, but oh. now and for numbers' sake, we read and look at the numbers, and the numbers say it's a that it's it's a great game. It's rated True. four out of five. This, that, and the third. Well, Majority of the bad. world. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's a bad game. True. Whether the numbers say that it's a good game or not, my opinion on the game is it's a bad game. But let and me that's tell you this. Why, and, and, that, me, and that's why, and, and that's the point I'm trying to prove. And let me and let me hit you with the other end of it. The reason you didn't like the game is because it was a bad Fallout game. It wasn't a bad game because if you would have named it anything else, the shooting mechanic was dope. The building mechanic was dope. Yeah, the way you got to that, build weapons. That's your that. opinion. I, I, don't don't look at Travis. Just look at no, somebody no, no, saying no. that. Hey, no, Everything no, you're wait. saying is your opinion. Okay. But Shooting now, mechanics, now, all of that. I well, I can't do that. I'm just giving you. I was giving you no. the raw example. Because okay. <laughs> everything you say, I could say the same thing. Shooting mechanics was trash. I didn't like the vats. I didn't like this. I didn't like. That I didn't like the building mechanics. The building mechanics, in my opinion, actually was kind of wonky. Um, I didn't like the fact that uh, I was forced to do things that I didn't want to do. Those very are just my opinion. Hey, and that is because majority true. of the world may say no. different. I love the game. Guess what? By you acknowledging the fact that it sold well, and you acknowledging that it was the best, because these are once again these are the facts. Then now you don't fall into the two most dangerous categories. You just didn't like the game, so that's you having your opinion, and that's fine. But just that, like I, didn't like I would game. think it was the same thing, though. How no. is it different? No, this is where it would be different if you went around yelling at how poorly the game sold, and the game sold poorly because it was trash. Okay, but that's now that's lying. That's sincere, lying, though. Sincere ignorance. And conscientious stupidity. So yeah, that refusing to ignore what's real. Now, so we're then, talking about two totally different things, then, because I'm just strictly talking about my people's opinions. I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about lying, and I'm not talking about the truth. Well, I've already this, established that. And, and let me tell you this: this all stemmed from Wolfenstein. Yeah, and the, with the other side, the people who support 
Nazis and felt like it was just stomping down yeah. on Nazis. So this is the position, and this is why this stemmed from that. Mm-hmm. So coming back from that, that's the whole reason I'm saying what I'm saying. Conscientious stupidity and sincere ignorance. By you choosing to support a group of people who wanted to completely ob- obliterate another group of people for the sake, for no reason other than... Oh, and just to clarify that, I, I wasn't saying Nazis were good people. No, I know Nazis are horrible bastards. I agree yeah, with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you were just talking. You were just pointing out that there were a group of people, which is a fact. There were a group of people who were butthurt. Yeah, and it was ga- some. Some of them were gamers because I yeah. remember wa- listen, watching the Twitter feed, and this is why um, uh, the 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 actual account, the the Wolfenstein account on Twitter. We're we're liking the we're liking the the replies and replying back to people, and they mm-hmm. even sent out a a response to everything. I get my whole point is is that I'm I'm not here to silence anyone. Very say, true. Say what you want to say, and my stance is just to you know not acknowledge it at all, especially if I don't agree with it. So I'm not here to to do that to do the do to um. To actually change somebody's opinion on what they believe in. What happened? Oh, baby girl. So, all right, well, we spent like 15 or about 30 minutes on that almost. That was actually way off topic. Uh, Actually, we should dive back into Sony's uh, E3 press conference. Now, let me tell you my issue with Sony, because once again, I wanted to start off with the issues and then go on positives okay the big issue with sony and i didn't realize how much of an issue it was until i seen a meme a meme this meme pointed it out perfect they had e3 2007 uh 2016 they had a picture of e3 2007 uh 2016 2017 then they had this year's 2018 Mm -hmm. it was the same four titles that headlined it Hmm. kingdom hearts uh, Last of Us 2, um, Death Stranding, and uh, the newer, well, the newest one would be Ghost of Tsushima. I, I f- hate saying that because I feel like I'm, beast, I'm blowing it. Uh-huh. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I think that's how you say it. Correct me in the comments, even though I don't know how you'd correct me. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right now, uh, phonetically. Yeah. How, uh, how you are supposed to say it. But that, that alone kind of threw me. And they made it clear. They said it's a showcase. Um, they they said they weren't there to super wow us, but I forgot what game they announced that was a big surprise that nobody was like super ready for. Um, what game was it? Uh, the Last of Us gameplay looked amazing. I can't believe, dude. I took notes on everything. I wish I had my my daughter. Oh, here they are. Give me a second. I was looking at that meme. I seen a couple of them. So it says it goes uh 2016. It has Spider-Man. It has uh Oh, there you go, Spider-Man. That's what it was. I said no time. Spider-Man, Detroit, um Days was it Days Gone and God yeah, of War. There, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, 17 it has the same games, God of War, Spider-Man, Detroit, Days uh-huh. Gone. But I I mean well now these, what was 18? These are these are the games that I was excited about. I'm happy I brought my notes. I took notes like crazy. Thank God you took notes. Yeah, bro. That's how serious I am about it. I took serious notes. So I'll jump back to uh let's see. So Square Enix showcase. Um of course Shadow Tomb Raider was cool. Uh Captain Spirit, the free game coming out on June twenty sixth. That actually looked like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I think I'll jump into the new Dragon Quest. Uh, I've never really played Dragon Quest. I played it a little bit on Game Boy, but uh, I think I want to drop into it. And then there was a game called Babylon's Fall. It really caught my attention, um, but you didn't really get any information about it. It just sounded cool. It was made by Platinum Games. Okay. People made Scalebound. Um, and then Octopath Traveler. Actually, I love 8-bit games, especially 8-bit or 16-bit or 32-bit, whatever. Yeah. Bit uh, RPG games. Um, and Octopath Traveler actually looks like that, and I really want to pick up a Nintendo Switch just for that, and just for uh, 
and also the Legend of Zelda. But then they had this what? weird. No game. Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu. Yeah, that, that's cool. <laughs> no, it ain't. Uh, <laughs> cool. uh, it might get me outside more. P- let's that's go cool. Pikachu. <laughs> uh, there was this weird game trailer called The Quiet Man. Okay. Uh, you need to go watch it. That that was awkward. Um, but then, g- yeah. So Ghost of Tsushima. That's that's the one I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, now jumping over to that was Square Enix. I'm jumping pages like crazy. Now with the Sony press conferences, the game that caught my attention was Control, even though it looked like a it looked like PlayStation's version of Quantum Break. Okay. Any sense? Um. And then there was Tre- uh, Trevor Saves the Universe. Um. The Neo. I don't know how to say the name of the game. Neo Two. Which was like a, a Japanese era version of Dark Souls. You know, I'm mad Dark you Souls. sat there and watched this whole thing. Yes, I did. And I it didn't ruin notes. anything for you. No, um, especially since it's all the games that I already knew were out, except like three of them. Uh huh. <laughs> so it's hard to ruin something, and that's what made the meme so funny, and that's what let me know what I was watching was kind of bunk, because ninety percent of this I already knew about. Yeah. Uh, except the gameplay for The Last of Us. That looked dope. If they keep that, and that's really how it's going to be, because you already know, we've seen videos of games. The, the Division is a perfect example. Oh, this is exactly what's going to be like, and then you get the game that's like, hey, weren't we supposed to have drones? Yeah. Like, wait, are we supposed to be able to do this? Like, weren't we supposed to be able to do that? Um, and then the Resident Evil 2, that actually really intrigued me. Um, let me see. And then Spider-Man, of course, but they've been talking about Spider-Man. Okay, and then Ubisoft. Ubisoft popped up, Beyond Good and Evil 2. I'm getting tired of them showing me pre-alpha footage. I don't want to see pre-alpha anything. I'd rather <laughs> you- I'm going to be honest. I could have went without them talking about this damn game. I wish they would have never announced they were making it until they had a beta ready. How are you going to show me pre-alpha stuff? And then do you know they had the nerve to bring on this company, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's company. Uh, I forgot what it's called. But basically... What's the dude's gonna, name? Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, he is from... He played Robin. Well, he was in The Dark Knight. Okay. Or Dark Knight Rises. Um, he was Dick Grayson. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay. So, this game... Is why it a uh, hit record? Okay, hit record. Yeah. They are letting people create the soundtrack and background posters and whatnot for this game. They're letting random people do it? They're let they're having projects like you can go online, sign up, and start contributing and helping to build audio f- and soundtracks for this game. It sounds cool, right? <laughs> it is <That> cool. Sounds- <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Fuck that. That's not cool. Why are you having me? Am I gonna get paid? No. <laughs> <laughs> am you, I gonna get? You ain't, am I gonna get you recognized? Ain't, you ain't know that's what they do. Oh yeah, bro, send in bro. your fan art. Send in bro, your fan art. In that we'll part, give you a shout out. That's <laughs> bullshit. Unless I'm getting a, I would take a half a percent. I would take a point zero zero three nah. of a percent. Hey me. Don't have me nah, over we'll, here working we'll, my ass we'll, off. We'll fly oh, you out. Right, we'll fly right, you right, out. <laughs> If my if my song or my image makes it, offer me an internship. No. Offer me something. We'll fly you like, out for the week. <laughs> you can come play the game pre alpha oh, stage. Oh my! <laughs> and we'll God. buy you a copy. That's that's it. That's genius. <laughs> it, it, okay. Yes, it is genius business wise. But all that's, in all, that's fucked up. That, that shit know, is genius. And people were gassed about it. Yeah. This is so dope. I was like, you you know yeah, I'm, who you I'm know who opportunities. I'm all for opportunities. You know me. Let me I'll tell you. I, go ahead. People who are gassed about that are confident in what they could do. So it's like I'm gonna do create the best thing smoking just to get a little notoriety, and that's and, all and, it's for. Ain't nobody and, thinking like the way you thinking because when you and, sit here and look at look at they have games where you can create levels. They have games where you could create levels and Roblox. shit. Let me go ahead and uh, make this my thing now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's these are things. These are things. And, and let me tell you, I do see the potential that'll come out of it. 
because let's say you do make one of the most popular soundtracks on the game. You are now known for making one of the most popular soundtracks on a major game. Of course. Regardless of you being paid about it, now everybody knows who you are. Think, think of, they do, and you know, it's funny, they do little documentary clips on YouTube about people who blew up for making beats. Yeah. Like the dudes, like, they'll be like, oh, the guy who made the beat for YG. And he'd be like, yeah, my life changed. I instantly became a, a world record producer. Of course. Because I made this one song. So I get the positives. And then I take this note from Heather B. From Sway in the Morning. From all the other accolades. From Boogie Down Productions. From being the first person, one of the first cast members on Road on Real World. Um, she, she said it best. She was like, I wanted to be a bartender. So the way I did it was I went and bartended for free. What better way to get out there? What better way to get? Because nobody's going to say no to a free bartender. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to bartend? Yeah. How much you charge? No, I'll do it for free. Signed. Done. Yeah. So I get, I get the positives. But at the end of the if that's your selling point, though, this is how they, they had a whole section of their presentation for a pre-alpha game. Listen, that is what they do, man. I'm not. I, I like I said, I. I see the wrong in it because I'm, I, first of all, I don't work for you. There you go. And and I'm saying that for me. I don't work for you. I shouldn't, I just shouldn't have to pay $60 and create something for you. Oh, well, yeah. What? That's how like I'm looking at it. I create something, I should get the game for free. But at the same time, people, some people will look at it as an opportunity. True. And. True. There are a lot of positives, and a lot of, and then a lot of people aren't looking at it that way. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if, hey, imagine if they put it to where, listen, I created something, I'm in the top ten, go vote for me type deal, and it actually is dope, you know. And then who say they they don't change their mind and say, hey, listen, you know, we want to use your thing, blah blah. This is what we're gonna do for you, you know. Now whatever the package is, you obviously have to agree to it, but at the same time. You know, I'm. I look at it different because I'm not. I'm not an employee for Hit Record. I'm not. No, I'm not about to be. I don't want to sit here and game the game for whatever amount of hours and then put two, three hours into creating a whatever for you. No, that's not. That's not the way I'm looking at it. Okay, so we're running low on time because I I didn't realize what we're doing. Oh, and let me let me tell you what pissed me off about this because this is Ubisoft. They brought out. Rainbow Six Siege, like this game isn't dirt old in terms of gaming. Shit, people. Still Even though people are still playing game, the man. hell out of it. No, and this is, but this shows you where we're coming to as a. I really think we're hitting that bubble phase of the gaming world. I think it's happening again. It did in the early not eight, uh, late eighties, early nineties, where it was just so much happening, so much. There was like ten different consoles and all type of craziness. Look at this. You had the nerve. To bring up a game from what 2016, I want to say Rainbow Six came out 2000, either early 2017, and it was showed off in 2016. Yeah, like I want to say how it went down. You brought it to 2018. They even brought out um, what's it called? Oh my God, I can't believe we forgot For Honor. Well, they, they got out- they got something new for it. What is it? DLC. Okay. Yes, they got DLC. They're bringing in a new faction. They're bringing four new fighters. I really did take notes. They brought in a new mode called Breach. But this is my thing. You didn't have enough to where that that should have been such a small, small moment. Like, oh, yeah, hey, for those who own uh, For Honor, yeah, we got stuff for you. Go check your inventory. Boom, move on. It shouldn't be a main <laughs> selling point. You shouldn't have had... The big backdrop. They, 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 they must be doing their numbers for it, for them to have. Uh, True. For oh, them yeah. to have. Oh, the numbers are there, bro. They, People are playing it. I'm not going to say. I'm not. And let me rephrase. I'm not knocking Rainbow Six Siege. I understand that's still one of the top games stream. People yeah. play the hell out of it. And I'm not knocking For Honor. Um, I'm not knocking it at all. Yeah. But what I am saying is, damn it, it's E3. Show me something <laughs> super new. You know what? Don't you know who should have pissed you off? Uh, what's the name should have brought out another DLC for for Grand Theft Auto? <laughs> Rockstar. 
<laughs> oh, sh- Fox Star got the decency not to come out and show me something for a five, six-year-old game at this point. That's not. I'm and not make a big spectacle about it. I'm not mad at it because people enjoy these games, and I I just started watching. I just started watching the competitive scene for Rainbow Six Siege, and oh, if sure. if if they back it, it looks like it can do something. They have competitive. They have a competitive teams for uh, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, oh, yeah. and that looks dope too. Hell yeah, they do. But this is the whole get down. When I when I come to E three, I want to be oohed and odd. Hey, it's hard to ooh and on me hey, you, over a game that's you, a year and a half. You old. was you wasn't ooed and odd, man. No, <laughs> hey, once and you're right. This is my opinion. Y'all tell me below what you think. Are you <laughs> ooh and odd about hearing about For Honor, which is probably dusty as shit in your data? It is dusty data, and it's probably dusty physical copy. Mm-hmm. Blow the dust off. Go put it in and check out the new updates from Ubisoft for For Honor. I'm saying, hey, man, I, I, didn't they uh, didn't they announce Remember something the for World of Warcraft? Uh, I didn't watch the PC, um, the PC one. That, I think that's the that Nintendo. I didn't watch any of the E3 announcements. Mm. Yeah, I'm listen, man. I'm not. I'm oh, not knocking. They're coming out with a new Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm burnt out of fucking all the, uh, Assassin's Creed. You know Assassin's what's funny? Creed is the I'm same not shit. I just, I'm just hooked on Monster Hunter. Right now. Same shit. I'd rather go play Fallout Four. You know, I actually want to go play Fallout Four. I want to give it a college. Yeah, try. we like, we spent the whole good thirty minutes on it. I I really want to go and play it and just try to take myself out of it. And try to act like I've never played Fallout. 3. Man, I want to play it. I might play it off stream. Oh, just like on some G. I've had some cool moments. I had a moment where I was shooting. Um, I was shooting at somebody, and I went into vats, and then all of a sudden, a death claw was behind me. Like it ran up on. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then I had a. Um, that was. You know what? I'm not. No, we ain't got time. Um. No, say your point. No, because I'm gonna get into a rant. Just say uh, your point, man. Dang, the people want to hear your why point. The, why the hell did they rush? How many companions you can get? I felt like I had to work for companions in Fallout Three. Remember, yeah. remember that one guy, uh, that ghoul who was a hitman. You had to like go on a mission. You to had to get go. Him. You had to go save him. Yeah, you had to steal. Like you had to steal his paperwork. Yeah, and, you and then or you could have bought him. No. What happened? Yeah, what happened was you you either could have bought him or you could shoot it out to save him. Remember the 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 mob bosses had him, and, yeah, in the in the subway, was. and he had to go down there and and save him because he was down there investigating a, like a missing yeah. persons or whatever. Yeah, now, he, I I didn't like none of the companions because they couldn't die, because I could just send them in to do stuff and that's that. They just didn't die. Like I was hoping, <laughs> I need a yeah. challenge, man. You you know what, and and that's I mean, why that's, mo- that's why most of the time I didn't bring a companion with me because it made it too easy. Because imagine uh, I got a death claw. Like it was one mission where there was a death claw in the house and you had to go get the death claw egg to trade oh, it or that something. Was I did I did that. I had to do the mission over because the the dude you sent the dude the. I sent the dude down and he gets destroyed and the death claw kind of glitched or malfunctioned or something. And he's swinging at the dude on the ground and I'm just shooting him with my little gun from the corner and he's not chasing me. And I'm just shooting him, shooting him, shooting him, reloading, shooting, switch guns, vats, do all of that. And I killed him. And I was like, man, that wasn't fun. So I stopped, reset the game and did it over by myself. That way I could do it. And that shit was kind of hard. I just remember it being hard. That mission was in. I remember being scared. Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, he popped out the floor, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was actually pretty. Yeah, it was like a little bathroom him. you could run into, and he couldn't hit yep. you in the bathroom. I, I stayed in the room and I cheesed the shit out. Of yeah, because <laughs> I, I was like, I know I'm not gonna beat a damn death claw head be- up, rolling around and shit. This ain't the one no, thing. The one Solid. thing I did like though was the dogs that you could buy the dogs. Oh and yeah, became, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, yo, I want a pack of dogs. Like I want eight dogs. 
I want a million dogs just following me. Imagine. Okay. But, Let me rapid fire because I got to get this out about you. So, games that I'm excited for. For uh, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 2, mm-mm. Kingdom Hearts 3, Can't Spider-Man. believe you said Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Can't believe never it. Never already discussed it. I never played it. I watch people play oh, it. Oh, yeah. Man. That's right. That's right. Uh, I I'm respect excited. that. I respect that. I'm excited for the division too. Um, Are you going to pre-order it? No. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not pre-ordered nothing. I'm. I'm so. Let me tell you how serious I'm about not pre-ordering. I'm not pre-ordering the red a red dead redemption even though lord knows i'm going to buy it there's no question it's not a quick rockstar could say it's gonna be microtransactions and i'm still gonna buy it because i know (laughs) it's resident evil i'm getting ready to i'm resident evil my bad red Red dead Dead too i'm buying that game i'm buying it i don't (laughs) give a shit but i'm not pre-ordering yeah i will not it, I know how stupid that sounds. It sounds that does dumb. not sound stupid. I'm gonna tell you why. Well, I'm, I'm and standing my ground on. It. I'm gonna tell you why I'm done pre-ordering ga- uh, pre-ordering games. Longevity in games are gone. Ooh. If I if I can't play the game for four years, i.e., Destiny, i.e., SOCOM Confrontation, i.e., Fallout Three, I'm not pre-ordering that game no more. Oh. Please tell me what you think of that semi dumb good trailer from Destiny Two. Man, I ain't even watch it yet. I didn't watch it because they, they, that game they can't do anything more to that game. That game they need to worry about what's gonna happen next year. Give me y'all need to do a new game. <laughs> they need to do a new game, or they need no. to make they need to give full reign, like full creative reign to the players. That's the only way people are going to go back to that game. That game Which, for four years never went below top 15 on on Switch, on Twitch. Never went below top 15. And this is Destiny 1 we're talking about. Yeah. So regardless of how you, me, Jesus felt about the game, uh, the game had viewership and people enjoyed it. At, right? Fact. How can we sit here... I played the hell out of it. How can we sit here and talk about a game that, that's not... I'm not playing it. I'm not eager well, to play it. Well, I don't care. I up and I don't even give a shit. Man, I don't care. And the only reason I know that is because I've seen it on Twitter. I'm about to play Call of Duty tonight. Out of spite for, for Destiny 2. Revolution. And it's only because they 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 really did you screw up. Huh? You got that digital on PlayStation? No, I'm sorry. Uh, I pre-ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but bro, we gotta stop. It's, it's getting too much. Yeah, no, nah, man. Let me finish my point, man. Oh yeah, my bad. I'm hurt. I'm low key hurt because that game should have been the game. It should have been the game everybody's playing right now, and it's not because they effed up. They really did. If they don't, in my opinion, if they don't give full creative or full custom ability to the players, no one's coming back to that game. And when I, I say I, fo- they need to, it needs to be like Warframe. I need I to be, to it needs I to be like to Warframe or even The Division. Y'all better give me, I want to have poison. Y'all need to bring back uh, damage over time. Y'all need to bring back all the guns that will suit. I, I need to be OP'd everywhere. Hey, hey, bro, you know what's so trippy about that? Is the failure of Destiny 2 at launch is what, what brought the the division back to life because the the division the division made all the adjustments but they didn't go around telling everybody exactly a small group of people started streaming the new stuff yeah and then after destiny 2 flopped in the beginning everybody started going back back to it it was it's a stream it's a youtuber by the name of skill up and I, I I watched him he played a gang he played a shit ton of destiny and then he just out of nowhere started playing the division and he was uh-huh. talking about it. Then I started paying uh-huh. attention to the streams. Red yeah. yeah red thing. Now it's like, dang, okay. It must be doing something. But I, I just... Shout out to Red X. I think he hosts me every now and then. He did. Shout out Red X. I'm not sure who you mm-hmm. are, but shout out to you, buddy. 
But yeah, that's my that's my whole get down on it, man. Destiny, Bungie, they got too complacent and they lost. They lost. Or they lost me at least. I'm gone. I'm not. I don't. I don't. Like I said, there has to be something dramatic for me to go. Folks, back. folks, y'all. Oh, you know they're bringing back RNG, right? I RNG. Don't, yeah, I heard that, but I don't care. Hey, let me tell y'all. You guys need to understand, and I'm gonna sign off on this one. For him to be saying this. He is truly hurt. I am. I'm hurt. I played the game for four years straight. The de- If I could go get my disc, my disc got a yellow ring around it. The game never left my PlayStation for nothing. I bought a new PlayStation to play other games. <laughs> I got two PS4s. <laughs> how, how, Sway? I got questions. I got questions, man. They, they, they ruined that game. The game, no, they just ruined it. And I don't see myself going back to it unless something dramatic is there. Or a gang of my friends come back. Hey, man, we're doing a raid. I may jump back for that. But I'm not about to come back and play because they they, they just ruined the experience for me. And I'm on that note, I'm done with my rant. Bungie, I hope you see this, son. I hope you seize it, B. Word is born. <laughs> oh, God. On that note, I am Baron J67 of the Hidden Cloud. And I'm uh, T. Jones. Uh, I am not, I, I'm red reincarnated. I'm it shiny, is. I'm shiny hunting. I was going to say Ash, but Ash is, Ash is, Ash is, Ash is, <laughs> Ash is trash. Ash so, Ketchum is trash. Never makes it past the second round of the, of the elite. Mm-hmm. War. Always getting destroyed. Constantly. I don't mm-hmm. think he's ever collected. Well, no, he had to collect all the gym badges. Yeah, he, he he collected all the gym badges badges in each he region. Never, but he he rarely wins like outright. It's always like, oh, thank you for saving my castle. He, thank you for saving my family. Here's a badge. <laughs> <laughs> Not because you got good battling skills, but because you helped me in life. It's funny. The the new the, stop. Oh, wait, ahead. hold on. The new season or the the. The seventh gen generation, which is Sun yeah. and Moon, that's when he became a beast trainer. Like he started oh. doing shit like cra- like he started winning, beating people convincingly, convincingly. And it was because like it just seems like he know all the tricks of the trade now. Like there's he like for example, I'm one part I'm gonna right. ruin, and this is it. He battled uh, Misty in the second half of uh, of Sun and Moon. Uh, this is the the show actually, yeah, yeah. and um. Misty had a, a Gyarados that she mega mega evolved, and uh, the Gyarados did the hurricane on Pikachu, so he uses Thunderbolt and and he's trapped in the the hurricane, so he uses Thunderbolt and has Pikachu run up scale the Thunderbolt to get out of the hurricane. How beastly is it? And and he beat he beat her he beat her mega evolved Gyarados, but at the same time it took you seven generations and you still ten years old and you went back to school. You trash. Ash Ketchum is trash. He got younger. He got younger. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> the, the fact that Ash hasn't had a kid yet. Oh, crap. The fact that Pikachu ain't gray because of how old Pikachu is. Don't they age like dogs? <laughs> I'm On that note, I'm Baron J67. I'm T Jones. Cloud. Of the Hidden Cloud. I'm T Jones. Yeah, I'm wearing this headband. I'm going to work with this. You should, oh, yeah. you should bend the edges. Like you, no, got, not, like you got an iron on your forehead. I'm not bending it. I want everybody to see it. Should it's fit. Right. <laughs> you feel the breeze on the side of your forehead? <laughs> oh, man. All right, man. That's going to do it for me. Um, I'm about to go shiny hunt this Skarmory. And, uh, I'm probably going to play Monster Hunter. Yeah, I should. I want to. I think I'm going to do both. I'm going to play. All right, man. Sign me out, son. Peace. Peace.